of Throwback Thursday albums of my favourite albums. So before I've mentioned the top 10, again you can look back on my list, but I'm just going to go through number 11 up to number 15. So number 11 was Michael Jackson's Bad, number 12 was Voodoo by D'Angelo, number 13 was Embryo by Maxwell, number 14 was Adjustments by Bill Withers, number 15 was Experience and Judgment by Andy Bay, and then this is an album where I... I've mentioned obviously Michael Jackson is number one for Thriller and then I've liked Bad. But there's an album before Thriller which most people who like Michael Jackson like Off The Wall. And I see why. Rock Review, great track. Working Day and Night, good track and I can't help it. The rest of the tracks, good and take a miss, depends what I like. And then the Jacksons were coming up with Destiny album which has some good tracks. You can blame it on the boogie, which wasn't written by them, and then Shake Your Body to the Ground, the rest of it, a bit twee ballads, not my favourite album. So there's an album in between, between Off the Wall and Thriller, which I think is a masterpiece, and it doesn't get recommended very much, and I don't know why. But anyway, I'm going to show you it. It's called Triumph by the Jacksons. This album is an absolute joyous album to listen to. So if you decide you don't want to listen to Off The Wall and you want to listen to Thriller but you don't like some of the tracks because they've been overplayed then listen to this album because there's a lot of stuff on it which kind of influences it. So this album is associate producer, it was engineered by Tom Perry and the associate producer was Greg Fillergains. Now as you can see this album, um, this great Peacock production thing, being in the 80s was a big Michael Jackson fan, I used to buy a lot of vinyls and I bought second hand and I've explained this sort of why because I was always wanted to do music. I, you don't know my background maybe, but I always wanted to be a music producer, songwriter and so forth. So in the 80s when you went around boot sales, people sold albums very cheap. I think I picked this is actually a promo album. <laughs> it's actually like see like it's got uh, property of CBS demonstration only not for sale. I got it for 50p as a child. I don't even know why someone would have got rid of this for 50p. It's fucking stupid. But anyway, this album by the Jacksons is their best album. Brilliant songs. Again, not a weak song on it. Um, very much this album then interties with the next album I'm going to talk about, why I like them, because it's about arrangement. But with this album, you've got mostly Michael Jackson wrote most of these. Um, and then you've obviously got some other things as well. But obviously Michael mostly wrote most of them. So the, probably the anthemic song is Can You Feel It, which was actually a video as well I got to see as a child with this big Michael Jackson and they, they've got the world coming together and this rainbow. It's just, it's, and it was actually to start off the live album. And Jackson's live album is great, but I didn't want to feature live albums on this or greatest hits or soundtracks. But I should have, there was a couple of soundtracks which were very close. So Can You Feel It, this idea of, the, idea of utopian, bringing people together, is very much epic, <laughs> epic being the record label, but the idea of that is this using music as bringing people together. And I think that's the one thing Michael Jackson always was into, was the idea of everybody accepting each other, trying to get find that commonality. His later work in the 90s sort of went away from that. It went more to his black influence, um, especially in history and, and later. Um, but that was fair enough, obviously personal, social conditioning, times change, what he'd gone through in his personal life. So, Can You Feel It, anthemic track, probably the, probably the most known track on it. We've got a lovely one, which is actually was a single, which is quite surprising, but I can imagine at the time in 1980, 1981, 1980 this came out. Um, it was sort of done after Off The Wall, so I mean, Michael's actually already done Off The Wall, and then I think he got his own influence and people liked what he did. Um, but also a lot of the musicianship on this, although it is... Um, the Jacksons, a lot of the musicianships are the people he met and actually most of them started featuring them on his other work so actually a lot of the musicians who work on this album were then on Thriller and some of them had featured on Off The Wall so Michael was kind of getting the sounds he wanted and some of the sounds on this album, some of the synth sounds are excellent um, so I think Michael sort of, this was his way of playground of working with sounds until he then got the sounds he wanted from Thriller obviously then working with the people he wanted to work on Thriller um, but lovely one, very much like a like a um, soul ditty with great horn um, ideas in it. 
uh, Jerry Hay again featured on this like he does on the other stuff and Tom Tom 84 was another group who featured on a lot of this um, with the arrangements of strings and so forth but Jerry Hay featured a lot on this and Jerry Hay then obviously was very influential to what was on Thriller and then Bad the horn arrangement uh, Your Ways is a lovely track it's got this kind of ballady sort of feel but again very structured but not obvious as well that's the thing with this album it's not like with the Destiny album it's very disco it's very much you can tell where it's going to go everything with this album it's slightly different there's a lot of stuff where it goes to these weird middle eights Choruses aren't always obvious, and they're, but they're very catchy and they're very upbeat. Um, Heartbreak Hotel, which is now was called This Place Hotel because the Elvis Presley State didn't like him using that name, is again kind of the predecessor to Billie Jean's Paranoia of Fans and Dirty Diana. Again, this really interesting soundscape. Um, he's actually, the girls are doing the singing, is actually the toy and I think a couple of friends of hers. Um, but again, he's using this stuff. So the actual, um, most of this is upbeat, unusual songs, you know, dance filled, can go in discos, but also can be heard at home or in the car. Time Waits for No One is probably the main ballad on the album. The rest of it is very much upbeat um, R&B and soul and funk music. Walk Right Now um, is again, very much a pulsating funk track. Um, Give It Up has got again this pulsating idea of this ballad but mixture with an R&B and then it's also got this military march at the end so again these ideas very much trying to use different ideas trying to create epic ideas uh, Wondering Who has a, a vocoder uh, section in it which also probably would have influenced PYT and maybe other ideas um, but again the musicianships on this um, had Michael Boduca, um, Ronnie Foster and Greg Philogaines, I mean Ronnie Foster's a great musician, but Philogaines is all over this album. He He's definitely, he's the associate producer, and you can hear it because the arrangements are out of this world. Some of the arrangements, are, some of the playing on this, keyboard playing is excellent. Um, so with this, um, Wondering Who wasn't written by Michael, but Can You Feel It was, lovely one, um, everybody's co-written with Michael, um, Heartbreak Hotel, Walk Right Now, Give It Up, um, so most of Michael was obviously writing stuff already a lot um, on Thriller he's funny enough he only wrote three songs which was quite strange because I think Quincy if he gave him a bit more time would have given him some great stuff however with Michael because of the time he takes to write songs and the production and all the work uh, maybe just they didn't have much time to probably have him come on Michael's stuff maybe they're just better songs they took like Human Nature great song why would you not have that on Thriller so yeah, so when we're looking at this, um, this album, to me, is the the predecessor to Thriller, and it's the and it's the things he's learnt from Off the Wall and Destiny, and it's an album that seems to have got forgotten, and I don't know why, but as an album, it's beautiful, great arrangements, great songs, and just amazing to listen to, absolutely worth getting. So please, if you can get it, 1980s. Triumph album by the Jacksons.